I'm Erica with the Coast to Coast Kombucha Club and today I'm going to be doing a tea tasting. I have eight different teas that we're going to be trying from the Tea Spot. They're from uh, Boulder, Colorado. Recently found out about this company. I just really like their mission and hopefully I'll really like their teas. So let me let the, get the camera turned around and we'll see what I've got going on here. So this is the wide angle shot here. I have to admit that I really thought about setting this up, trying to make it look perfect, only using my teaware that actually matched, but you know what? We like to keep it real. So I found a, that I actually have a pretty good collection of tiny teacups. I've got some of these from my Japanese tea set um, paired with, oh goodness, <laughs> paired with my grandmother's uh, top to her custard cups. I've got these little perfect looking, I think they're for espresso or something. This I actually got from a uh, real tea tasting at a tea shop in Temecula. And then um, I'm gonna be drinking a whole big cup of this uh, red rubos here. So I decided to just use one of my favorite mugs. <laughs> so the teas that we'll be trying today are a red rubos and a fermented black tea, a black puer, and a psalm, which is also a black tea. Herba mate, which I guess would be considered kind of an herbal, although this does contain caffeine. Some people like to drink it as a replacement to coffee. Next, I'm going to be doing another black tea, a new moon Darjeeling. A white tea, the only white tea I'm going to be doing today. It's monkey picked white tea. It's not actually picked by monkeys, but so the legend goes, uh, monks had monkeys pick tea back in the day, but that's done in, in uh, that style. And that's just what that speaks to. Um, next, oh, some of my favorites. I love green tea. This is a Chinese green. This is clouds and mist. And then also a green Japanese tea. This is Japanese orchid green. I think it's kind of an okumidori for you green tea aficionados. And if I haven't pronounced some of these right, um, bear with me. I'm not an expert, just a really big fan of tea. And I'm going to be experimenting. I've never done this at home, so I'm not really sure how this is going to work out. I'm going to be starting with the teas that need to be done in 212 degrees and so I'll be doing those first and I'm going to be, I wish I had more of these, I'll be individually steeping them. This is just like a tea insert or a tea straining insert for a coffee mug. So we'll see how that goes. And then I have a journal. <laughs> I'm a science nerd so I'm going to be writing down little notes. I listed all the tea that we're going to be doing today and then in the next pages maybe I'll do like a little note or two about what I thought about them. And my goal here today is to figure out what teas I really like, what teas I might blend together for my next batch of kombucha or June. So let's get started. To heat up my water today, I'm gonna to be using my Breville teapot. I could do a whole video on this thing, I love it. For each of these teas, I'm just using the instructions that came on each of the packages. I just put them on little cute address labels. So I'm going to be doing a small amount, so I'm going to be doing a quarter teaspoon for two ounces of hot water in each of the cups. All except for this one. For this one, I'm going to be using a little more tea. I'll be using three quarters of a teaspoon for two ounces of hot water. And one thing that I thought would be cool is to kind of treat this like a wine tasting. So I'm going to be doing the more delicate teas first. So I'll be starting with the green teas and then moving maybe through herbals and to the black. First, I filled up all of my teaware, all my mugs and cups, with a little bit of almost boiling hot water, just to warm everything up so that it stays nice and hot through my entire tea tasting. Green clouds and mist on the left, and green Japanese orchid on the right. I forgot to get this video started before I drank most of the Japanese orchid. It was actually even more brilliant green. It's a very beautiful tea. Here's the monkey picked white brewing. It says brew it from three to six minutes. So I'm gonna taste it about the three minute mark and then the six minute mark and just see how the flavor changes. You can see why this is called a white tea. The tea liquor is really, really light and kind of white compared to the more green of the green tea. Red rugos on the left, obviously, and then the herba mate on the right. The herba mate really reminds me, or at least the way it looks like a green tea, but it smells nothing like it. I'm excited to try it. And here we have the Assam on the left and the Darjeeling in here. <laughs> I accidentally drank it without taking a video of it. It was a much lighter color, kind of the similar reddish brown color, but much lighter and delicious, obviously. And finally, the strongest tea of all these, certainly the strongest smelling, is the black tea, the black fermented tea, Pu'er. 
So we'll see how this tastes. So I thought this would be kind of interesting. After I steeped all the teas, I went ahead and um, put the tea leaves on a plain white background here. So going around, we've got the Japanese orchid green tea. The other green was a Chinese clouds and mist. Here we've got a beautiful monkey picked white tea. The herba mate, the red rubos, and the two black teas here we've got First, the New Moon Darjeeling and the Assam Tea. And then finally, so black. I don't know if it's really showing up here, but is the Black Pu'er, which was amazingly delicious, by the way. So here is the aftermath of the tea tasting. This took me a little longer than I thought it was going to take, but it was definitely worth it. So there you have it. I just finished my first at-home tea tasting and it was definitely fun. It was a little more time consuming than I thought it would be and it definitely gave me a greater appreciation for going to a tasting in an actual tea house where they do all the heavy lifting and you just get to drink the tea. But I would do this again. I definitely would. I think it was a great way to just sit back and relax and observe and figure out what it is that I like about these teas. And I'll be sharing some of my observations and impressions about these teas in the description box but you have to decide for yourself. So what you read about my observations, just take it as a jumping off point. If it sounds good to you and piques your curiosity, maybe it's a tea you'd wanna try. But much like beer or wine, chocolate or hot sauce, everyone's gonna have different preferences and what tastes like something to me might taste like something totally different to you. So I encourage you to try something like this, maybe not with eight teas all at once, but try a few and just take your time, write down some notes or however you'd like to document that. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.